up next is our interview with Katrina Walker. Even as a young girl, she always had an entrepreneurial spirit. But as she got older, she got married to a man who wound up abusing her, but she wound up surviving. She's going to come in next and tell us about her extraordinary story of being homeless, being abused, and then becoming a multimillionaire. Keep it locked. My new dad teaches me all kinds of stuff. I wouldn't use this one. He helps me with my decision making. Ever. And he's even teaching me how to drive. And that's why cars have bumpers. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of kids in foster care will take you just as you are. I just know that I was born to be, of course, who I am. Because as young as four years old, when I tell people I raised myself in this little small, close-knit community in Memphis, which they call the Melt Lock, I was four years old, and I just remember my grandmother always stretching food. Eggs, you know, they make them go a long way, but at four, I had sense enough to know, hey, you know, I got to go across the street. I already know that they didn't cook some baked eggs. <laughs> <laughs> so this started at four. At eight, I started, you know, Mama would leave us a quarter piece. I had two younger sisters by then, mm -hmm. and she would leave us a quarter piece on what they call a chester drill. And my sister them would be slobbing and drooling and sleeping. I'd wake all the girls up and whoever was spending the night mm -hmm. and tell them, get up, wake up. It could be a Saturday morning. We got to go. And they know, go where, you know? Mm -hmm. But I already had jobs lined up and they had to go find bottles. So from there, you so know, you create a business. make more money. Yes, and, okay. and, and when they would find the bottles, we would go to the store and I would give them orders as far as what to do. Drag them in the store, go back outside and wait. I go in and negotiate something. I just remember with this white man. Yes, he was a white man and, and a grown man, you know. And I go in, little girl, eight years old, negotiate something with him. He'd give me dollar bills. I go back out. I always made sure everybody was okay. And all the girls would have dollars. So I was an entrepreneur then, not knowing there was a name attached to it. Yes. Right, right. <laughs> so then from there, you know, I started ironing sheets for little ladies that was looking at as the world turned. I'd be in there and I'd convince them, you know, hey, you know, those sheets would really feel good. If you let me iron them, I'll charge you one dollar. You know, so I just was always doing something. My mind was always there. So to start the daycare center, I was working at FedEx. Mm -hmm. So I went in as a temporary. And I really needed that job. It was a young company. It was only 10 years old. So I needed this job. Mm -hmm. And when I landed the job at Federal Express, finally, after they interviewed like 80 people and they was going to hire 10, over here and a girl said, I sure hope she get that job so she can buy her some clothes. But I wasn't, <laughs> I wasn't worried about her. Shady. But I got the job. I landed the job. Fred Smith himself, the owner, used to come out and talk to us. And when he would talk to us, we would gather around like this. And I would always listen to him. But I would think to myself, you know, I don't want to, you know, work here. Thank you, Mr. Smith, for this job. But I don't want to work here and be an old lady <laughs> got, for the rest it. of my life. Right. You got so, bigger plans. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so anyhow, I started thinking, you know, this company is ran all night long. His orange and purple, whatever color planes are flown out around the world while everybody's sleeping. But some people work. Not everybody work nine to five. I said, you know what? I'm gonna use that same concept and start my first, start the first ever 24-hour child care center. So I was a mother. I had four small children, or four children at the time, and, uh, and you had just left that abusive relationship as well. Exactly. Yes. Wow. I, I left. I left the husband finally and um, started the 24-hour child care center, and uh, that's how it all came about. Just an idea from that old place. Yeah. I just think that is so amazing that people were telling you, oh, you should leave him. You'll never make it. You right. never exactly. get anywhere. You'll never exactly. get anywhere without him. Exactly. And look, you made your own business and mm -hmm. you became a multi millionaire. And just thinking business. outside of the box, not just yeah. opening a daycare center. Mm -hmm. You know, everybody usually, you know, go to work from six. Well, they had daycare centers from six to six, but everybody don't work those hours. So exactly. what was mamas doing after mm -hmm. six o'clock? Right. Yeah, right. some people work like nurses and you got doctors and you got people working in the hood facility. Just people that work nice, night nice shift. Right, exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So <laughs> since then you have ventured and, and broadened your base. Now you're doing a whole lot of other oh, things. So talk yes. to us about your other ventures. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know all of these things were going to happen the way they have happened, but I wrote a book. I wrote a book and it's called Unbreakable. I decided to, that I wanted to tell my story, my life story, and to help other women, men too, but I'm a woman, to help 
young women, you know, because they were me. You know, I was at home with this woman at one time with four children, you know. You know, I was that woman that, you know, had to get food stamps and, and, and had to, you know, just figure it out, had to run and duck guys, you know, my children's husband from beating my butt and not coming in and just seeing daily. I was that woman that my mama told me to go back to sleep. That, you know, what word she would say. I can't say it right now, <laughs> but he'll be in there with a long A line. My mother was accustomed. She's no longer with us. But lay back down, Trina. You know, because she was so accustomed. And that's, you know, it was okay, you know, to her, you know, lay down. He'll be in there, but it wasn't okay to me. So, you know, I was that woman. So that's why, you know, I came up with this book mm -hmm. that I decided to write and tell my truth. You know, because a lot of times people are shamed. Right. You know, yes. they don't want to talk yes. about, you know, the what things happened? that go on yeah. in their life. You know, it didn't just happen to me. Yes, I had five husbands. Yes, I'm not ashamed. Mm -hmm. You know, I was vulnerable, and I would leave one relationship. I stayed married to my children's father for 20 years, mm -hmm. 20 years, and I went through a lot because mm -hmm. in my mind, you know, I was thinking, you know, you know, I mean, I just wanted my children to be raised with their father, so, you know, but I took a lot of abuse. Was that the oh, right I thing to do? I, you know, it was the right thing to do because that's all you could do at the time. Yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> so you talk about like your life story in the book and you give you give advice to other I do. women I who, do. who I just tell well. I tell everything that I could remember. I took it back, like I say, as far as I could remember at four years old. And I just told the truth. You know, whether my mama, you know, said, Trina, I'm gonna beat the blood out you. You know, mm -hmm. I kept it real and you can feel it. You can feel you know, and she was a good I mom. I love my right. mother because yeah. I haven't gotten in any trouble, you know, of right. course. Was she gonna really beat the blood out and kill me? Oh no. You know, right. but she gonna put enough fear in me, you know? And I talk about it. It's, it's a lot of funny stuff in there, too, as well. But I also talk about things that I saw. My uncle coming over where his wife had threw chicken grease, hot fried chicken grease all over. You know? Oh, I, I, oh. I talk that's about that Al Green treatment? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's worse than the grits, you know, being a grit. Sometimes when you're a <laughs> cheetah for that, for our young what audience, Al Green had grits thrown on his back. He was a cheater. He yeah. was a cheater. When you're a yeah. cheater, sometimes yeah. you got to throw some. I mean, but they might know me, that but. from Medea movies where her advice was to throw pot, pot grits. Um, well, yeah. you know, I, get it. I was the little girl, and though, and I talk about being in Memphis when Dr. King died, mm -hmm. my grandfather being one of the sanitation workers, and just all the screams and the hollers. Mm -hmm. I was there. I saw that. Mm -hmm. You know, so literally everything is in this book that I could remember, you know, and some happy times also as well. Everything wasn't just horrible. A lot was, you know, a lot of things that I saw, yeah. a lot of cheating, a lot of women with black eyes, you know, Ooh, uh, a lot of right. things that I spoke about men having a family here and then one across the street. Before they had child support, my sisters and father running and hiding from his own children to keep from, you know, giving them some, wow. Money, wow. <laughs> some money, not even a check then, you know, my mother would send them over. And me, myself, never knowing my father. You know, when I hear about people talking about daddy's girl, never knowing my father. And born what in, that does and, to you. Yes, right. I talk about all of that and asking my mother, you know, who's my father? And she would always constantly tell me, I'm your MF and yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm your daddy, daddy. I'm your mama, I'm, I'm your everything. Daddy. Yeah. And I, after growing up and get to be about 26 years old, finally, you know, saying, please tell me who this man is. And she said, I'm going to show you one time. Don't you never ask me no more. And, you know, just having all of this is in the book, you know, because yes. I wanted to meet this man, you know. Who is my daddy? Well, now I'll definitely, well, I wanted to read the book already, but now I definitely want to <laughs> read the book and see him? how that did worked out. Him? I did meet him. I did meet him. Oh, and he was, this is so I don't, good. I don't and he would say what happened. We okay. Give it. We got to read the book for that. <laughs> Look at okay. me. I'm like this. Oh, <laughs> what happened? <laughs> what happened next, girl? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> No, but it seems like you are definitely the type of person who likes to give back, and you also have these yes. seminars yes. called Lift Each Other Up. Yes. What, what is that? Well, I love to give back, and especially to our women. You know, we have no room to not share and not give back. I got to tell folks where I got this lipstick from. I got to tell another woman, you're beautiful, you're yeah. pretty, you know. You know you I, did. You, you really did. Everyone, like, you're so pretty, so beautiful. I'm like, Aw. I got to be Did you there say for that to me? Yes, yes she, did. Like, yes, she did. Wait, excuse me, wait. Yes, say yes, for the camera. She's <laughs> well, you know, I'm one of your friends. I tell you all the time. Don't play. Y'all sure. know. Yeah. You, I always tell you, you're beautiful. <laughs> Thank you. She not. told it to us, too. Like, <laughs> she told yeah. it to you. She wasn't was the only one who got it. Yeah. Okay. Don't hate. Don't hate. Okay, go. So, yeah, you lift the women up. and, and Yes, and I've been like that. You know, like I say, a lot of the names that they have now, philanthropists, 
I call them free hard. Be <laughs> free hard. Because, you know, if you're in my house and you say, hey, Trina, I like those lamps. And I know I ain't got no money, but I'm going to help you put them in the car. You know, I was always that way. I wanted to see everybody do good. Because mm. it's enough room, enough love for everybody. And that's mm. just me. That's my personality. Yeah. I just want to see everybody <laughs> happy, you know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yes. So, so what happens during the seminars? What do, you, do you talk about anything in particular? Like what happens typically? Well, I talk about, you know, uh, relationships. Mm-hmm. I talk about, you know, I'm just down home. I keep it real. Mm-hmm. Nothing's instant with me. And, and, and that's just what, how I love it, you know. And I think that that's what people want. You know, people are tired of this fake stuff. You right. know, they right. want real. So I talk about how to make money. How I oh, went we from... Need, oh, we need, we need that. We need that. in New York City? Oh, yes. <laughs> I, I'm here. New York is home. Okay, is home. okay. Yeah. Oh, I need to know yes, when sir. the seminar is, the days and time, so I can come. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> I need to make some money. Yeah. Yeah. I need to make money. some money. We need to make some money. It's not a game. Oh, so I also want, I want to get to the play, but first, I really just got to ask you about Blind Dive Foundation. Because the last time you were here, you were talking about that mm-hmm. and how you're mm-hmm. helping people and building mm-hmm. people up. So mm-hmm. just well, want to Blind Dive, again. again, is um, I had a nephew, and I'm sure, I don't know if everybody has somebody that they know that got, uh, that a, was affected by crack cocaine. And I'm very sensitive to this story because my nephew, we were very, very close, mm-hmm. and he was addicted to crack cocaine. And uh, he could just never beat it, you know? And he ended up doing some time. He didn't kill nobody, but he was in Virginia, and my sister was there. And uh, he went in and stole something, and uh, he did the time, got out, and um, he did a lot of time, a lot of years. And I always say I did those years with Travis, was his name. And he walked me down the aisle with my last husband, and um, three police officers was at my door the next day. And he had just literally got down. He had a car wreck. He died, and before he died, he actually left a tape. He told the guy that videoed my wedding, you know, I got something to tell my auntie. I got something to tell my auntie. And the guy said he, you know, at the rehearsal, he never did have time. And he said, uh, then the, at the wedding, he kept saying, I got to tell my auntie something. But my my nephew literally told me, you know, I love him. And it says if he already knew, I don't know, you know, but he's listening to it. He said, I love you, and I'll always be, you know, with you, you know, and the next day. So the drug epidemic, I just want to give people, and that's what I do, a second chance at life, you know? Mm -hmm. So many times I said people see things and then, you know, it's like it's not your family members, not... But you don't, you know. Oh, they and I try to blind, blind, blind eye. Exactly. Yes, yes, right. absolutely, yes, yes. Mm-hmm. And so that's why I came about with blind eye. Not just even that young mamas, you know. Don't look down at people, you know. Just because the girl got the little dress on or whatever, you know. If she goes to church, don't down her. You know, she's here. You don't know a person's heart. So that's what it's all about. Just helping others. You got ten pair of tennis shoes. You know, you're not gonna wear all ten. You know, share, give them away. You know, give them to somebody. Help somebody. Right. That's what blind eye is all about. Is helping people and giving people a second a second chance in life. Love that. Love that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Going into so it, you're like doing that. You're already philanthropist. Thank doing all these things for other people. And I love like, people. I love people. And you know what? Honestly, that's what the world really do need now. You know, we love. really. I mean, honestly, we do. You know, I mean, it's so much. It's a lot of hate people guys. are so tensed up right now. You know, they're angry when they're driving. Family members are mad at each other. They don't speak for years. You know. Yeah, um, I mean, Surprise. we've had that in my family. So the things that I talk about, I share. You know, that's one. I'm, I'm, I'm not ashamed because I know it's gonna help somebody. You know. Yes, I've had five husbands. The second one stole from me. Mm-hmm. Was I supposed to stay with this man? I had already vowed after 20 years. God only pr- promised us three scores and ten. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> that, you know. So my biggest right. mistake, and what I try to tell people is, you know, just take your time. I didn't take my time. I thought I was gonna forget about one person. With this new one waltzing oh, in, get over, mm-hmm. get under. Mm-hmm. Yes, opening yeah. doors for me, and just don't always believe, you know, everything. You know, you just get to know a person. That was my biggest mistake. So I talk about my mistake, you know, in the seminars, in the book, anything that you want to know. There's no shame. Right, I tell exactly. you, exactly. Exactly. shame will kill you. Like shame will kill you. you. Shame and we all you. go through stuff. You know what I'm right. saying? We all. I call it stuff. You know, we all go through stuff. Right. Wow. These are really good. You act surprised.
practice makes perfect. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. There are thousands of teens in foster care who don't need perfection. They need you. <laughs> Mom, can we get some ice cream? Please, Mom, please. No, we're having dinner oh. soon. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. There are thousands of children in foster care who will take you just as you are. Hey, going out like that? Yeah, why? Well, um, what would the neighbors think? <laughs> I see you! Come look at Mr. Feather! Yay. Look what I have. Mr. Bird, remember? Bark, bark, bark! We're just playing! We're just playing! I'm trying to get you out of here! Even still. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. There are thousands of teens in foster care who don't need perfection. They need you. Being a dad can be tough. No, no, no. What do you mean she's not coming? When's the fairy princess coming? Any minute now. <laughs> but when you're willing to do anything... It is I, Cruz, Zinc or Bell. Yeah. Okay, time for cake. It's always worth it. I know it's really you, Drew. I'm just pretending for the other kids. The smallest moments can have the biggest impact on a child's life. Take time to be a dad today. Call 877-4-DAD-411 or visit fatherhood.gov. What is the 411 news? Welcome back to What's the 411 where we're talking to the lovely entrepreneur, Miss Katrina Walker, and she's about to tell us about her performing and, and, and writing plays. So tell us how you got into that. Well... I tell you, it's nothing but the good Lord. I, I, I give him all of the credit. Honestly, I do so. Sorry, I got to get a little spiritual on you, but I got to tell you how I feel. We're going to have a little judge in here. But uh, anyway, <laughs> the way I came about it was um, my mother. She's no longer with us. And she, of course, it's called Miss D's Kitchen. And everything went on in Miss D's Kitchen, in her house, in her kitchen. And um, when I wrote this play, this stage play, um, I took the first one uh, t to Memphis, and people were saying, take it to this little small theater. And me, Miss Trina, you know, of course, I want my folks, whoever come out, I want them to be able to look at chandeliers. And they was like, uh, no, uh, you will never fill this place up. Oh, you know? oh really? Okay. What the heck? <laughs> yeah. okay. And uh, you need to take it to such and such. And people, you know, I took it to Memphis, and people in Memphis don't support you know. They don't? This that's is what, what, that's, what that's what they say. That's what they say. They, right, right. They, uh -huh. Uh -huh. And uh, it's sold out. It's I'm sold out. It's sold out. Perfect. So, um, Miss D's Kitchen is hilariously funny. I have uh, Tony Grant from Tyler Perry's Love That Neighbor. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> I have um, Cheryl Pepsi Riley. Oh, yes. uh, she's going to be in it as well. Um, uh, and a whole lot of other great characters you know mm -hmm. so you know i just really want people to support this come out and see this play you won't stop laughing miss d is dropping jewels <laughs> <laughs> she's telling those children to get off her couch <laughs> <laughs> so yes it's, it's a wonderful play and uh, i just thank god i give him everything all the glory to god you know for this play so were you ever nervous about you know having not done this before about being a director on something actually writing something and also acting in it was there any nervousness about that no <laughs> really? I, yeah. promise, I promise you, no nervous. You know, and uh, got on stage, and I, of course, I'm Miss D, of course, like I said, and um, um, I created every one of my characters. Um, I'm just so proud of myself. Yeah. Yes. 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 Uh -huh. yes. Yes. But, <laughs> but uh, you know, I, I was not afraid, and, and that's what you know took me. You know, nothing. You know, just. I mean, it just, I just got out there and did what I do, you know, and when I wrote, I wrote from my heart and didn't even know that I was such a great writer, you know, people was coming to me and things that I would even post up, they would say, you are just such a great writer, mm -hmm. so I didn't know, it was just a gift, you know, mm -hmm. and we all have a gift, you know, we have more than one gift, that's what we have to recognize, we got two, three, four, you know, you, you don't have to just do one thing in life, you know, and that's, and, and that's what I say, I like for chapters, I'm in another chapter in my life. And, and, and I know that I'll have more books than the book that I have. It's almost like what Dr. Mario Angelo said. She had written seven autobiographies. It's almost like who's counting? Because even after this book, if God willing, I'll 
got another book because things are still going on mm-hmm. in my life. Mm-hmm. Of course, the yes. not over at it's all. Even, you know, <laughs> just beginning. You know? yeah. yeah. So we were talking to kind of you know behind the scenes, and I know Keisha, you were asking about you trying to delve a little bit deeper into what. Um, what's going on in Miss Walker's life before. Yeah, I did. Yes. Um, you know, there's been a lot of emphasis on mental health yes. these days. Yes. And I have a sports background. And that's been also a big issue where athletes coming out and discussing their struggles mm-hmm. with mental illness. And mm-hmm. what I wanted to know about from your side and your perspective was how were you able to overcome the mental abuse and anguish and what that probably did to you and yourself, feelings of self-worth. How did you um, overcome that to become mm-hmm. the person who you are today? Because you're quite lovely and very giving and and the opposite of what you might think a person who has gone through your situation would be. Mm-hmm. So I'm just wondering how you were able to um, overcome that, some of the keys or some of the thoughts that somebody mm-hmm. tell you something that really just resonated with you and just started to turn that and ship you know, around. It's, just, it, I, I, it's so ironic that you would say that and ask that question because it's an excellent question because of the things that I saw. I saw, they used to call it a nervous breakdown back in the day. Mm-hmm. And my mother had one. And again, I talk about it in the book, uh, how, you know, I saw her as a little girl down on her knees cutting grass with scissors because she had mentally, you know, lost it. And it could happen to anyone, you know. And I've heard people say sometimes people don't come back, you know. And I even lost a best girlfriend because everybody deal with the infidelity differently. And she never could really cope with her husband cheating and getting babies on her. But how did I do it? How did I do it? My mother, she looked up at me one day and she says, Trina, and she had gotten old and she says, I've just never, her eyes had aged to blue. And she said, I've never seen nobody go down and come up. Go down and come up. But I never said, Mama, you know, what are you talking about? You know? But I realized what she's talking about. How did you not, how did you survive these things? Right. You know, iron being, you know, your man stand out. You know, he got babies on you. And then this one right here in your home, you, you're standing in weak lines. They didn't call them weak lines then. You're standing in a field trying to get, you know, milk, black and white milk for your baby because she's three pounds. She, she said, you know, how, how do you how do you do it? You know, this man won't help you, you know. You know, you don't have anywhere to live. Y'all don't have nothing to drive. You know, you don't know what to do, you know. But how do you do it, Trina? Well, you know, my thing is, you know, I would say with me, well, one thing, I know that my children, they were everything to me. Just to be honest, they, they meant the world to me. And and I knew that it had to be better than this. I just knew that I was not placed on this planet to be poor or poor, like my mama said, <laughs> and broke. Yeah. You know, I wasn't supposed to be poor and broke. And, and, and I, I knew, I never thought about it, but I, I just didn't think a man could run me crazy. No matter what he do, if he stayed out, you know, no matter what he did to me, nothing could break me. And that's why my book is called Unbreakable. And I know that we all are unbreakable to a certain point. Now, I do realize that some people do need the help. And I believe that, you know, I believe that sometimes people have to take medicine. Don't get me wrong. But that is not the first choice. I think that if, as women, as people, you need a good friend. I do remember my mother once telling me that, you and your friends gonna go through some of the same things, and I am, have always been that person that would talk about things. I never tried to make it seem like my house was a bed of roses. You know, right, I know right. you can't tell yeah. all of your business right. to everybody, right. but you do have to talk about things. You know, yeah. and you have to know that you know the world doesn't end. You know that you have to look at things in a positive way, right. and that's how I've always mm-hmm. been. You know, if I look outside, I don't care if it's cloudy. You know, and I don't like that negative stuff. And I've never been one of those per- people that listen to naysayers. So the way that just not having that mental breakdown or that mental meltdown, I think positive. Everything starts with your thought. Mm-hmm. You understand? Absolutely. Absolutely. Everything starts Absolutely. with Man, your thought. I so and so right? I know that that's what helped me. And I like psych- psychologically, mm-hmm. I just believe in people talking about things and talking things through and you know, and I just, like I say again, I don't think it starts with being medicated. Mm-hmm. I think that, and, and I'm not against medication. I do want to get that clear. I am not a doctor, but just being a woman that have survived a whole lot of stuff. I've worn more hats than, I've lived more lives, I'm going to put it like this, than a cat. 
you know, yeah, cafe right. from yeah. that. That's right. <laughs> you know, I done came right. to, close to death so many times, but I'm still here. From home invasions, you know, I've been through it, but no, I've never broke. You know, I'm still okay, and I thank God for that. Yeah. Right. Right, that's, that's beautiful and that's amazing. Thank and, you. and I cannot wait <laughs> to read the book. <laughs> but you know, before we let you go, we don't want to let you go. I don't but want to go. Uh, <laughs> I just want to ask, what are you working on next? I know you said you write some books, you could do other plays. Well, what are you What are you working on right now? Right now, I'm working on my own TV show, oh. and I'm also pitching a scissor reel for a sitcom as well so wow. I got a lot of stuff oh that I'm working God. on I'm just so excited and what I want to say is I just thank the people for loving me mm -hmm. you know and uh, I'm bringing something new to the table that we haven't seen in a long time you know and again the honesty the realness I don't believe in instant cream of wheat or oatmeal you know put a little salt in that water and put that pot on the stove and, and let boil <laughs> and store it you know so I'm giving it to everybody real you know and and that's what I'm, I'm just taking it back down home you know and I just hope and pray that everybody appreciate it and, and, and just really support what I'm getting ready to bring to the table. Oh God, can you give us a little taste? What is it going to be about? What is it going to deal with? The sitcom. Oh, the sitcom? It's going to be fun. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be funny. It's going to be um, everybody from the mailman, you name it, going to be at Miss D's house having a drink. You know, everybody looking for their mail, you know? Oh, okay. Yeah, so oh. all kinds of things is going to happen right there, you know? Oh. I can't tell y'all right now, you know, oh, but you we got to stay tuned. Of course. Of course. Intellectual property. Thank you, sweetheart. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Oh, okay. <laughs> Mom, can we get some ice cream? Please, Mom, please. No, we're having dinner oh. soon. Please. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. There are thousands of children in foster care who will take you just as you are. Hey, you going out like that? Yeah, why? Well, um, what would the neighbors think? <laughs> I see you! Come look at Mr. Feather! Yay. Look what I have. Mr. Bird, remember? Bark, bark, bark. We're just playing! We're just playing! I'm trying to get you out of here! Even still. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. There are thousands of teens in foster care who don't need perfection. They need you. Being a dad can be tough. No, no, no. What do you mean she's not coming? When's the fairy princess coming? Any minute now. <laughs> but when you're willing to do anything... <laughs> it is I, Cruz, Zinc or Bell. Yeah! Okay, time for cake. It's always yeah! worth it. I know it's really you, Drew. I'm just pretending for the other kids. The smallest moments can have the biggest impact on a child's life. Take time to be a dad today. Call 877-4-DAD-411 or visit fatherhood.gov. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Oh, well, it was a pleasure having you Thank here. You. Thank you so much for sharing, you know, next steps in your journey and stuff. And you have to come back. Okay, thank you When the sit comes me. up and, uh, you know, share with us again. Thank you so much for having me. You're welcome. <laughs> Who's got the 411? 411, they got the 411. Who's got the 411? We got the 411. What's the 411? The 411. What's the 411? They got the 411. We got the 411.